So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at, of course, with the news coming out from Pfizer. And of course, Governor Cuomo makes some very interesting points. Previously, in one of his posts, um, he had stated on Twitter that even if a, even if a vaccine came out, that he has no intention of allowing that vaccine, of course, to be administered to those within the state, primarily because he felt that it wasn't safe and he had his own um, he had his own doctors that he wanted to review the vaccine first to see if, it, of course, it was if it was safe. If it was safe, now he is kind of changing his tune about not necessarily the vaccine because of the supposed introduction of a new administration. There is, of course, people are saying that Joe Biden has won. That is yet, of course, to be fully declared by the U.S. government. Who is going to be the next president? Outside of what the mainstream media says. Cuomo, of course, now slightly changes his tune. He still says that he, of course, is against the administration of the vaccine, but it's for different reasons. And this is actually very telling. He, of course, blames Donald Trump for the politicization, for the politicization, politicization of the virus. But actually, he is the one who has been all along has been politicizing. And of course, many of the other Democrats have been politicizing the virus. And of course, Donald Trump said this a very long time ago. But what we're going to do is we're going to listen to what he has to say in terms of why he is taking the stance that he is in terms of the new uh, Pfizer vaccine and what and how this will impact, of course, those who live here in New York. And then I'll give my comments about why I believe he's stating what he's saying. It's a vaccine distribution in the next two months. What do you make of this news? Uh, well, it's it's good news, bad news, George. The good news is uh, the Pfizer tests look good and we'll have a vaccine shortly. The bad news is uh, that it's about two months before Joe Biden takes over. And that means this administration is going to be implementing a vaccine plan. The vaccine plan is very important and it's probably the most ambitious undertaking, undertaking since uh, COVID began. Uh, just to put it in focus, uh, we did 120 million COVID tests in this nation over seven months, scrambling, doing everything we can. We now have to do 330 million vaccinations, maybe twice. Uh, my state does more testing than any state in the United States. We did 12 million tests. We have to do 20 million vaccines. Uh, and the Trump administration is rolling out the vaccination plan, and I believe it's flawed. I believe it, it learns nothing from the past. They're basically going to have the private providers do it, and that's going to leave out all sorts of communities that were left out the first time uh, when COVID ravaged them. So what needs to be done that the Trump administration won't do that President-elect Biden could do? Yeah, the, uh, the the Biden administration, when you deny uh, when you deny a problem the way Trump did, uh, you can never solve it. And that's uh, true in life. The Trump administration denied covid. So they were never ready for it. There was no mobilization of the government. Uh, and they're still doing the same thing. They're going to take this vaccine and they're going to go through the private uh, mechanism through hospitals, through uh, drug market chains, etc. Uh, that's going to be slow and that's going to bypass the communities that we call health care deserts. Uh, if you don't have a Rite Aid or a CVS, then you're in trouble. And that's what happened the first time with COVID. Why do we have such a disparity in the infection rate and the mortality rate in COVID? Because some communities uh, don't have the same access to health care. Uh, I'm sure the Biden administration is going to address that. I think his first step saying, let's focus on the science, let's depoliticize, testing data, uh, listen to the science is the exact opposite of Trump. But uh, you have two months and we can't let this vaccination plan go forward the way the Trump administration is designing it because Biden can't undo it two months later. We'll be in the midst of it. Uh, and I'm going I've been talking to governors across the nation about that. Uh, how can we shape the Trump administration vaccine plan to fix it or stop it uh, before it does damage? And we're in an emergency right now. We're seeing the cases rise across. So that's basically his points of vaccine. the virus about the vaccine. I did want to make one point when he talked about how there's a disparity between different groups. And he, of course, he blames it on people not having access, I guess, to certain types of certain forms of health care. 
the reason why there's a disparity and why it one it predominantly affects it predominantly affects men and two it predominantly predominantly affects individuals who are obese and that's typically because that's what you that's what you primarily see within minority neighborhoods of black and hispanics one of the biggest problems within those neighborhoods of course is diabetes high blood pressure you know um and obesity diabetes high blood pressure and high cholesterol and those and that's and of course those and those patients typically don't fare well to, for the most part with many with many hospitalizations they always have an increased risk of unfortunately dying because they're typically coming in sicker they usually have chronic issues they don't pay attention too much uh, unfortunately to their health and of course these are the decisions that of course that are made because they're culturally related much of the food that, that both Hispanics and, of course, blacks eat are not necessarily the healthiest, the healthiest choices of foods. And, of course, that impacts their health over the long term. And so when you have a brand new virus that, of course, um, it, it is primarily designed to lay people up in the bed as a respiratory virus, of course, that will highly impact most of these individuals. And, of course, that is that those are the facts. His perspective on the virus is highly politicized. The other thing that I did want to talk about, as he said in the as he said in the video, where he said that they might want to change it or, of course, stop it. And of course, Governor Cuomo previously has said prior to Pfizer releasing the information about their vaccine that he had no intentions of allowing uh, New York access to the to the vaccine. As he said, he has his own doctors that are going to look over it for the purpose of, of course, making sure that it's safe. And of course. I never really, I never believed that that was his reason for that. The reason I believe so that he wanted to do that was to artificially depress the state for the purpose of, of course, getting a bailout. New York, I think even, even back as far as April and May, the, the, uh, the mayor was, of course, pushing for a bailout of around $32 billion dollars. Just they needed just 12 billion alone just for the MTA just to get through 2021. And so that, that's my opinion about why I believe that he is, of course, now subtly changing his tune because of what's going on, of course, with the presidency, and of course, with the faulty ballots that, of course, that are being asserted by Donald Trump and the administration saying that they've found ballots that, of course, from dead people, etc. We have yet to see whether or not. Uh, the presidency will change hands from either Donald Trump or, of course, to Joe Biden, despite, of course, what the media says and proclaiming that uh, Joe Biden, of course, is has won the has won the election. The media does not choose who wins. It is, of course, determined by the Electoral College. And so we see a little bit of backpedaling to kind of brace for which administration is going to take hold. Of course, he praises Biden before even Biden can come even into office. Obviously, the man is biased, wholeheartedly biased, of course, because Donald Trump, excuse me, I mean, Joe Biden, of course, had stated that um, if he became president, that he, of course, would make um, Governor Cuomo attorney general. And so, of course, the man is biased to praise one person over the other before the person, of course, has even had the opportunity to come into power and of course to see how his, how his administration will unfold. But in my opinion, this is primarily related to the bailout needed for New York. And that's typically the, the, typically the stance that he is taking. We see the exact same stance, of course, being taken by Governor Newsom. Newsom and of course, California is also in need of a bailout as I believe that their state is about 33% missing. In turn, they're missing about 33% of their current um, budget. For, for the year. And of course, as you've seen in both New York and in California, neither one of these individuals knows how to run an economy. They're both literally running their economy into the ground. And in my, in, in my opinion, is primarily, of course, related to pushing for a bailout. And of course, Donald Trump and the Republicans have said, hands down, which is one of the reasons why the previous um, stimulus package did not get passed, was because it was full of bailout and of course the republicans and donald trump said that they have no intention of bailing out democratic states that are poorly run it was not fair to the taxpayer and of course it's not fair to the republicans to continually seek bailouts for individual states for individual states of course that are poorly run and so if anyone is politicizing what's going on it is definitely 
Governor Cuomo.